And, and you know, the answers are hard, but we have to be asking. Of course. Hamad, do you have any questions? Many questions, actually. Uh, we'll have quick questions and hopefully quick answers, ma'am, if it's possible. Um, yalla. Let's have a guy and then, then, then a girl. Yalla. <laughs> Your name, please. Could you please stand up? Matar Ibrahim, a member of the parliament. Good. Uh, uh, I got the opportunity to enter the exchange program, uh, MIPI program, uh, Leaders for Democracy. And it has a good impact on my uh, 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 election in, in the last period. Uh, it was a, a great opportunity to enter such a program. Uh, thanks for uh, uh, the P Department of State <coughs> for what they are paying and the, the programs for MIPI. Uh, it is very useful for us, and I think uh, uh, we should see in parallel uh, uh, progress in the uh, uh, foreign affairs policy in the United States. Uh, uh, my question uh, is, how can we see our relation with the United States uh, as an opportunity for, uh, let's say, a, a growth for the democracy? First of all, thank you for the positive words about the MEPI program. That's one of the initiatives that we support out of the State Department to uh, help educate and train um, young people in Bahrain and elsewhere in the Middle East uh, to run for parliament, to uh, start new businesses, to be active in their society. So I am delighted to hear that you think it was worthwhile. You know, I, I think it uh, is uh, absolutely clear that the United States uh, is constantly uh, reviewing not only our allies, but our relations with every country. And we issue several reports. We issue a human rights report. We issue a religious freedom report. Uh, we issue a human trafficking report and other reports where we express concerns about uh, other nations. And since I became Secretary of State, we've also been reviewing ourselves, because I think it's only fair if we're going to review other countries that we review uh, the progress uh, or problems in the United States. And I know when you're in the midst of societies that are uh, as dynamic as Bahrain is, uh, with so many uh, changes uh, uh, happening, that it's easy to uh, be uh, very focused internally and see the glass as half empty. I see the glass as half full. I think the changes that are happening in Bahrain are uh, much greater than what I see in many other countries in the region and beyond. Um, now, I'm not saying, as I've said many times already this afternoon, nothing's perfect, nothing is done. There's a lot of work that still lies ahead, and people in the parliament are going to bear um, some of the responsibility for uh, being able to navigate uh, toward uh, positive uh, outcomes. And yes, I mean, people are arrested, and uh, people should have due process, and there should be the rule of law, and people should have. Uh, good defense counsel. We believe in all of that, and we say all of that. Uh, but on the other hand, the election was widely uh, uh, validated because it was free and fair and had high participation. So you have to look at the entire picture. And maybe we have the perspective, because we're looking at the entire world all the time, to see how much progress you've made. And we encourage additional progress, which is why we have programs like MEPI. Sure. So many um, questions. Secretary One more question from this part, and then I'll go to the other side. Uh, <laughs> your name, please. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Ashil Arayfe. Um, I just have a one quick question because I'm so curious. Um, uh, I'm sure most of you agree that one of Bahrain's biggest assets is a strong, courageous woman. So what I was wondering, um, I'm sure you know about all of our women empowerment achievements here in Bahrain. And I'm curious to know what are the challenges that American women face currently. I'm sure that they went through a lot during history, and that's what's brought you uh, like here today. So I was wondering what type of challenges they face. Thank you. Well, well, thank you for asking that, because that's another part of the answer to the, the young parliamentarian's question. Uh, the role of women in Bahrain has advanced much more than in many places uh, in the region and beyond. Uh, women are playing an active role in your government, in your professions, in your business community, uh, the academic world, uh, the not-for-profit NGO world. Um, and I learned today that 47% of the women, uh, or 47% of the positions uh, in government and civil service are, are women. So that is an amazing accomplishment in a relatively short period of time. 
Uh, and I've met with some of the courageous uh, pioneers here in uh, Bahrain, and I am deeply uh, impressed by what they have done to open doors for the young women I see sitting in front of me who will have uh, the opportunity to pursue their own uh, particular dreams. In our country, uh, you know, we have made tremendous progress. In my own lifetime, uh, we have, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, there still remain challenges, as there do in any society. One of them is nothing to do with laws or with barriers, but how, how women balance family and work. Uh, you know, if you are, as I am, very, uh, very proud and happy that I have uh, uh, been able to combine work and family and raising my daughter, uh, you have to admit that it's challenging. Uh, and it's something that each person has to work out for herself within her family. Uh, and uh, we, we don't have very much support for working women, not enough in my view. We don't have enough support for uh, you know, maternal leave and the kinds of things that some of the European countries do. Um, so we, we still make it hard on women to go into the workforce and feel that they can be uh, good at work, but then doing the most important job, which is raising your children in a responsible and uh, positive way. But, you know, the, but there still are lots of people who are working even to change that. So we, we, we make progress, but uh, I'm not here to tell you that we have all the answers, because I don't know any society in the world that does. And part of what I hope is that we can support each other as everyone makes these changes and tries to uh, improve. Madam Secretary, do you believe, like, we just had a question from a member of parliament, and it's nice to see a young man in our parliament. Uh, men and women above the age of 30 are allowed to enter as candidates. Do you believe that this in itself is a very good sign? Do you believe that what happened lately with the Bahrain's parliamentary elections when the biggest uh, political opposition party won 18 seats, do you believe that um, uh, the society should look at this in a very positive way, especially when opposition gets to occupy that many number of seats in the parliament. Doesn't it reflect integrity? Well, I, I, I believe it does. I mean, I, I think you, you've got to recognize again uh, that in many places in this region, there are no elections of any real validity or legitimacy. There are no opposition parties or candidates or office holders. And so what you have done with this election and many of the other changes that have gone on uh, is to make a, a commitment to democracy that is paying off. Now, elections, as I said, are just the beginning. And whether you're in the majority or you're in the opposition, you have to compromise in a parliament. Nobody gets his or her own way 100% of the time in a democracy. Um, and that sometimes is frustrating to people, people who believe that they have all the answers, that they hold the truth, that it's their way or no way, uh, find it difficult to function within a democratic system, uh, and particularly in a parliament. So uh, I think the elections were a very important uh, milestone. Now, of course, it's getting the parliament to function, getting people to talk to each other across lines that otherwise divide you, trying to get some common objectives that will advance the well-being of the people. You know, that's what uh, is expected.